but the players just kept playing one play at a time and made the plays in the end of the game that we needed to make. So uh, Jason McClellan, offensive line stepped up in the second half. Defense had some big stops. They only scored once in the second half, got to stop when we needed to. So I uh, thought Bryce did a really good job of managing the game today. Um, you know, it was a tough night in a lot of ways, but a great night for us uh, because I think we took a step in the right direction as a football team, and I'm really proud of our guys for the way they competed in the game. Questions? Uh, from Joe. Uh, Coach, uh, Byron Young had 11 tackles, taking multiple sacks. Just how important was he in the game? Byron played great. Um, Mississippi guy. So, you know, I'm sure he was fired up for the game, but I thought he played great. But he's played really rough for us all year. He's a good leader on the team. It means a lot to him. Um, and glad to see him doing well. Yeah, we didn't see him here in the second half. Was there a reason why not? Uh, he twists his ankle. Well, I mentioned, you know, what a great job he did in the second half. He made some physical runs, a run he made on second and 12. I mean, he basically did that on, you know, grit and determination. R really ran hard in the game, played physical. He's played well for us all year. Jameer's just played really well, too. So, Jay stepped up tonight and took advantage of it, no, no doubt. How difficult was it trying to stop uh, Judkins' kid? Uh, just how fast is he compared to what you saw on our field at the side of the game? Running back. Coach. Running back Judkins. Yeah. Oh, he's a good player. And, um, you know, they're, they're tough when they spread you out with four wide receivers and they run the ball so well and they have such good backs. And he's he's an outstanding player. Fast, physical, can make you miss, hard to tackle. And you got to try to stay in nickel. You can't play dime because you can't stop the runs and you can't really match up on the passes. So one of the things that happened in the second half that helped us when we got some third down stops is we stopped the run a few times. We got third and long so we could play dime so we could match up on the passes and got a couple sacks and got off the field on third down, which was huge in the game. What was the spark that Kendrick Law provide when you kind of put him in the third quarter? Kendrick Law has really come along. You know, he's, he's a guy we really – were hoped was hopeful that would be a contributor. Uh, he pulled his hamstring, you know, several weeks ago, was out for a couple of weeks, but now he's back to full strength. He played really well on special teams a couple of weeks. And um, I thought he did a really good job, but he's a guy we've been trying to get in the lineup now for some time. What was the message you delivered to the offense after the fourth down play early in the game and how did things change after that play? It wasn't a real good message. Um, you know, obviously a miscommunication on the snap count, the play, the shift, the motion. But I think those kinds of things, um, you know, when you talk about, you know, sometimes you just got to do simple things better. You know, the simple things like focusing on doing your job, focusing on the snap count, focusing on who you're blocking, focusing on what your eye control is in terms of what you're looking at. You got to do simple things better. And that was the message that I gave to the team before the game. And they obviously got it, you know, right then when we're not doing simple things very well. So, um, but I think the offense really responded, especially in the second half. I was really, really pleased with the way they responded on the line of scrimmage to be able to run the ball effectively and uh, to make plays on third down when we needed to and move the ball, control the ball. Um, and control field position in the game. Two by Ken. You uh, feel Ricks, how's he doing health wise? And also, you always talk about pride and performance uh, for your players. In what ways did you see that? Tonight? Well, Eli Ricks is okay. I think he's his head is the issue. Um, so we haven't been able to test him from a concussion protocol standpoint as of yet. Uh, but I saw him in the locker room. He's okay. What was your other question? You talk about pride and performance, you guys having that. Uh, how did you see that tonight? Well, I, all I've been talking about is how the players competed in the game. And I think that um, they have a lot of pride in what the standard of playing Alabama is. And they were challenged to play to that standard, to take it personal, um, to understand that they're responsible for the identity that they create by how they play on the field. It shouldn't be anybody else that makes that determination for them. And I think that's um, 
they took it personally, and I think they showed it in a game tonight. A couple more, Katie. How much of time that was fumbled? It was huge. Um, I mean, you know, set up a score, uh, got us to 17 14. And, you know, from that time on, I thought we played a little better in a game on both sides of the ball. So, but, uh, you know, that being getting 17 14 at halftime. But, you know, nobody even talked about the score at halftime, right? which is exactly how we wanted it to be. Because the whole focus in this game was we got to play one play at a time for 60 minutes in the game. And nobody's looking at the scoreboard, and they competed that way.